She has 23 years of experience working with children and young people within a variety of settings, both in the UK and Australia. She has a passion for raising awareness of speech, language and communication needs and improving communication outcomes for children and young people. So Fiona, we're really grateful to have you here today sharing your expertise um, and I will pass things over to you. Thanks Thank very much. you. This is at the point where everyone disappears and I feel like I'm talking to myself. Um, right, let me go to my slides. So thank you everyone for joining us um, today. What I'm going to be speaking about is a blank language scheme. And when I mention blank, it doesn't mean as in blank, empty, nothing there. It's actually referring to Marianne Blank, who's a researcher in the States. So the aim of today's training session is for you to have an understanding of the four levels of questions within the blank language scheme. To have a chance at practicing those levels, we're going to have a go at a few interactive activities and to think then about how the blank language scheme can be used within the school setting. So thinking about different subject areas, um, also the playground and behaviour management. So the first activity I'm going to get you to do, and Hugh, if you can put this link in the chat, that would be great, um, is Looking at that picture, if that was a scenario that you were involved in, you were that adult in that picture, what questions would you ask that child? So if you can do it on the Padlet link, that would be great. And I can show you all the different types of questions. Or if you just want to use a pen and paper, that's fine as well. So I can see things coming up. What I'll do is I'll come out of this in a bit and show you the questions that are popping up. Just give you another 10, 20 seconds. Brilliant. If you leave it there with the last question you're writing and what I'll do is we'll come back to those questions and I will be able to share the screen and show you um, what's been said. OK. OK, so the blank language scheme is based on the work by Blank Rose in Berlin back in 1978 and although quite old it's still very relevant to today and the work that um, staff do in the classroom so what they did was um, go into classrooms in the states and look at the different ways that teachers were questioning and then they broke down their research into four levels of questioning and these questions move from simple concrete questions to more difficult abstract questions and this is what I'm going to talk through with you this afternoon so given that it's a year one um, GM series of presentations, I've linked it to year one science around seasonal changes. So you would have been talking about the four seasons, winter, spring, summer, autumn, discussing what happens. You might have read stories. You might have actually given it's winter now and experienced some of that and had a lot of those discussions around those things. So we're going to focus on winter. So that's the picture that we're sort of looking at. And for level one, it's all about matching perception. So the language matches the objects that are directly in front of the child. So the types of questions that you might ask are around matching objects. So you point to one of the trees and you say, find another one like this. Naming objects. So you're pointing at the snowman and saying to the child, what is this? So getting them to name items. Um, pointing to an object, so you'll be doing show me the dog or find a snowball, show me the sledge. So you can see those questions are quite simple, um, basic, straight there in front of them, so quite easy to answer. 
Level two questions are what they refer to as selective analysis. So the language is focusing on parts of the object in front of the child. So thinking about the function, description, how you sort and categorize words, and those simple who, what, where type of questions too. So a function question might be find something you can throw. It's things that go together. So being able to categorize things. So what goes with a hat? It could be gloves. Sentence completion, which we do all the time. So you put your hat on your and where you're expecting the child to fill in that missing word and describing a scene. So tell me what is happening. So you'd be hoping they'd be just you know, describing what they can see there in that picture. Concepts such as find something that's pink, so around colour or around number, find two trees. Um, again, think about categories, so find an animal and hopefully they'll say dog or tell me the name of another animal. So you're relying on them to know that that's a dog and a dog is an animal, but then to think outside that as well and think of another animal name too. And then those who, what, where questions. So you might be saying the boy's sledging in the park and then your questions are simply who was sledging, what was he doing, where was he? So you can see they're getting a little bit more difficult and they're relying on, on parts of the picture, not just um, specific objects. The new level three questions are what they refer to as reordering perception. So the language doesn't actually match, doesn't need to match directly the objects in front of them. And the child needs to start thinking about that object in its, um, in its context or just thinking outside the box a little bit, using their own experience to start answering some of these questions. So this is where being able to follow instructions comes into and obviously that's a part of everyday life within the classroom. So it could be find three stones, a scarf and some sticks for the snowman. It's around sequencing. So loads of curriculum activities around putting pictures in the correct order. So you might have got um, a building snowman sequence pictures and you're asking the child to put them in the right order. And again, after the event, it's talking about, well, how do you build a snowman? And this can be related to real life in, um, incidents as well. So obviously with the snow we've had recently, you might have been outside making snowmen in the playground. And again, it's that retelling, describing an event, so getting them to talk through how you build a snowman. Level three questions are around, also around prediction. So what might happen next? So you're pointing at the girl with the snowball, and I've realised that actually, if you don't look too carefully, she's not got snowball in her hand and clearly didn't have my glasses on when I was writing these questions but um you could pretend she's got a snowball in her hand so what might she do next what might happen next and then thinking about the characters as well so what's the little girl saying to her mum so getting them to think you know about the conversations they might have had with their mum or carer or, or other family members how does the character feel so you're pointing at the boy on the sledge so they're having to put themselves in that person's shoes then too and defining a word. You might have spoken about the trees being bare. So then talking to the children, what does bare mean? And then the level four questions are getting into your problem solving at a higher level. So the justification, your problem solving, your inference style questions. So how can you tell it's winter? And you're hoping they're going to infer that obviously there's snow, the trees have got no leaves, they're all in warm clothes, that that can tell you that it's winter. Um, explaining why something can't be done. So why can't we go sledging in the summer? So they're having to think about what it is that means you can go sledging and then why you can't do that in the summer months. Um, being able to solve problems. So you're building a snowman, but you can't find any stones for the snowman's eyes or, or buttons. What could you do instead? And then identifying a cause, what makes it snow? So when you've been talking about winter, you might have gone into a little bit of detail about how snow happens. So getting them thinking about that cause. The justification, so why don't the trees have any leaves on them? So you're having to think back through all the seasonal changes and, and the work that you've done in science around this. Thinking about compound words, so why is it called a snowman? and explanations. So again, pointing at a girl with the snowball or how can you tell the girl is happy? So you're hoping that going to be so I can tell she's happy because I can see she's smiling. Um, so it's again looking for those clues in the picture around the level four. 
So you can see from level one, it's going to really basic things to getting more difficult as it goes up through the different levels. And what their research showed is that children or 60% of three year olds should understand questions at level one and two and 65% of five year olds should understand questions at level three and four. I know in Salford we have done a lot of universal screening in reception across um, the different blank levels and a lot of children in the autumn term in reception really struggle with understanding those level three and four questions and even still not necessarily all passing level two questions. So there's a lot that we can be doing as speech therapists to support yourselves as teachers into sort of boosting that understanding and a lot of that can come down to vocabulary knowledge as well. Um, by year one, you're hoping that they are understanding the level four questions, but I'm sure that you're probably all thinking of children now within the classroom that maybe struggle with those areas. So what I'm going to do is stop presenting this one for a minute. Let me just and I am going to go to the Padlet. Um, And we can have a little look at the types of questions. That you are asking. And seeing whether you can have a look at the levels that some of these questions have happened. So with blank level questioning, yes, no questions are not considered blank questions. And it's also thinking about if you put can at the beginning, that turns it into a yes, no as well. So I can see one of them is can you tell me where it hurts? That term, well, they could, they could say yeah, but they don't necessarily have to tell you. So it's thinking about the wording of those questions as well. So we've got lots of what's happened, where have you been hurt, where have you hurt yourself, um, how are you feeling? So that could end to a level three type question. I'm just trying to see if I can move down the um. What's really nice is that there are no how questions, too many how questions in there. So how did this happen is a little bit harder to answer. But it's starting often. Well, we can talk about this in a minute before I start giving you answers to things. Right, let me stop this one and go back to the presentation. So what I want you to do now, I'm going to play the Gruffalo to you and then we are going to answer some questions. So I know Hugh and Laura had sent through a link um, which had a Word document on it, which goes through all those different level questions which will support you with the activity after this. This is an old chance for you to stop listening to me talking and to listen to a nice story which you should all be familiar with. The Gruffalo by Julia Donaldson illustrated by Axel Scheffler and read by Alan Mandel. A mouse took a stroll through the deep dark wood. A fox saw the mouse and the mouse looked good. Where are you going to, little brown mouse? Come and have lunch in my underground house. Oh, it's terribly kind of you, fox, but no. I'm going to have lunch with a Gruffalo. A Gruffalo? What's a Gruffalo? A Gruffalo? Why? Didn't you know? He has terrible tusks and terrible claws and terrible teeth in his terrible jaws. And where are you meeting him? Here, by these rocks. And his favourite food is roasted fox. Roasted fox, I'm off, fox said. Goodbye, little mouse. And away he sped. <laughs> Silly old fox, doesn't he know? There's no such thing as a gruffalo. On went the mouse through the deep, dark wood. An owl saw the mouse. And the mouse looked good. Oh, where are you going to, 
a little brown mouse. Come and have tea in my treetop house. Oh, it's terribly kind of you, Owl, but no. I'm going to have tea with a Gruffalo. A Gruffalo? What's a Gruffalo? A Gruffalo? Why, didn't you know? He has knobbly knees and turned out toes and a poisonous wart at the end of his nose. And where are you meeting him? Here, by this stream. And his favorite food is owl ice cream. Owl ice cream! What? Goodbye, little mouse. And away owl flew. <laughs> Silly old owl, doesn't he know? There's no such thing as a gruffalo. On went the mouse through the deep, dark wood. The snake saw the mouse, and the mouse looked good. Where are you going, school, little brown mouse? Come for a feast in my log pile house. Oh, it's terribly kind of you, Snake, but no, I'm having a feast with a Gruffalo. A Gruffalo? What's a Gruffalo? A Gruffalo? <laughs> Why, didn't you know? His eyes are orange, his tongue is black. He has purple prickles all over his back. And where are you meeting him? Here, yeah, by this lake. And his favorite food is scrambled snake. <laughs> scrambled snake? It's time I hid. Goodbye, little mouse. And away Snake slid. <laughs> Silly old Snake, doesn't he know? There's no such thing as a gruffle. <gasps> oh! But who is this creature with terrible claws and terrible teeth in his terrible jaws? He has knobbly knees and turned out toes and a poisonous wart at the end of his nose. His eyes are orange and his tongue is black. He has purple prickles all over his back. Oh, help! Oh, no! It's a Gruffalo! My favorite food, the Gruffalo said. You'll taste good on a slice of bread. Good, said the mouse. Don't call me good. I'm the scariest creature in this wood. Just walk behind me and soon you'll see. Everyone is afraid of me. <laughs> All right, said the Gruffalo, bursting with laughter. <laughs> you go ahead and I'll follow after. <laughs> they walked and walked till the Gruffalo said, I hear a hiss in the leaves ahead. It's Snake, said the mouse. Why, Snake, hello. Snake took one look at the Gruffalo. Mm, crumbs, he said. Goodbye, little mouse. And off he slid to his log pile house. You see, said the mouse, I told you so. Amazing, said the Gruffalo. They walked some more. So the Gruffalo said, I hear a hoot in the trees ahead. Oh, it's Owl, said the mouse. Why, Owl, hello. Owl took one look at the Gruffalo. Oh, dear, he said. Goodbye, little mouse. And off he flew to his treetop house. You see, said the mouse, I told you so. Astounding, said the Gruffalo. They walked some more till the Gruffalo said, I can hear feet on the path ahead. It's Fox, said the mouse. Why, 
Fox, hello. Fox took one look at the Gruffalo. Oh, help, he said. Goodbye, little mouse. And off he ran to his underground house. Well, Gruffalo, said the mouse, you see, everyone is afraid of me. But now my tummy's beginning to rumble. And my favorite food is Gruffalo Crumble. Gruffalo Crumble, the Gruffalo said. And quick as the wind, he turned and fled. All was quiet in the deep, dark wood. The mouse found a nut, and the nut was good. Okay, so you've read the story of the Gruffalo to your year one class, and now you're going to think about asking questions. So this is where you can get a piece of paper and a pen, or even discuss amongst yourselves, depending on who you're in the room with, um, and think about the blank level questions for the blank levels for the different questions I've written on the screen there. So I've taken some pictures from the book. So you've always read the book beforehand or talked about the activity beforehand before you go and ask the blank level questions. So I don't know if we want to use the chat for this bit or if people, how people would like to do it, um, but you can start thinking about the questions. So I'll give you a clue in that there's a level one, two, three, four questions within those four questions. So if you are going to use the chat, you might want to put them in the order that the questions are there as to your answers. You can see I've got some answers there. So I'll go to the answers. So we had some correct answers there on the chat. So the mouse is walking on a path, hopefully is what you'd say, so it's a level two because it's a sentence completion. So you're pointing to the pine cone and say, find another one like this, that's a level one. Why is the tree fallen over? You're obviously trying to solve that problem and give some reasoning and explanation, so that's a level four. And then the question around feelings would be the level three. So well done, those of you who got the right answers for that. So the next page, again, we can do the same, writing down the order to the answers. Again, there's level one, two, three, and four questions in there. Thanks for your answer, Helen. Got some more. OK, so if. I'll go there. The four, two, three, one was the right answer. So why does the owl look scared? So you're having to give those reasons, which should be level four. An owl's a type of bird. Tell me another type of bird. So that's a level two question. What's happened in the story so far? So at that point, you might have the book with you or you're showing them the picture and they have to then retell that bit of the story. So that's a level three. And then show me the flowers being a level one. Well done. OK, the next one's the same thing again if you want to put the levels in the chat or just write it down on your paper.
Oh, lots of good answers again. Oh, mix, mix of responses this time. OK, so let's go to the answers. So point to the fox, the mouse and the gruffalo is a set of instructions. So that's a level three. What is this as you point to the rock is a level one for naming. Why is the fox running away? So they have to give that reason again. So it's a level four and then find something sharp, sharp being a function of an object, a characteristic of that object. So that's a level two. OK, another set of questions. Quite a few of the same answers. <laughs> OK, if I go back again. So three, four, two, one being the answer to that one. So what's the Gruffalo saying to the mouse? So that's a level three. It's around how character, what the character is saying. If what would you do if you ever met a Gruffalo? So that's a level four. So they're having to really think themselves and, and be imaginative about what they might do. What is happening? A level two. And what is this? As you're pointing at the pine cone being a level one. OK, again, another set of questions. Being right at the end of the story. Lots of responses coming through. OK, let's have a look at the answers. It was three, two, four, one. So tell me the story. So it's that retell, that narrative. Um, sequencing style thing which is level three question again a butterfly can fly tell me something else that can fly so that's a level two how can we tell that it's daytime so it's that inference again of that although i can't remember what's on the other side of the page but um you can see that it's clear it's not dark so it's definitely not night time um and then show me the acorn being level one question what is interesting is, is just seeing your responses then that too, it's often that distinction between a two and a three, which can be quite tricky um, when you're working with the children to work out what is a level two question, what is a level three. So it's just going back to sort of that crib sheet that I've given you as well. So it's thinking about how blank can be applied to different curriculum areas now. So this is where again we can use the chat or people might want to use their hands up. Hugh, I'm using you as my guide here as to thinking about whether you already use blank level questions within your setting um, and how you do that across different subject areas and you can share that with everyone or whether you've got ideas for these different areas. So there's literacy, science, design and technology, maths, PE, playground, lunchtime. Um. Okay, Lizzie, I can see you've just put you haven't received the word document. I'm sure Hugh and Laura will sort that out. Is 
Does anyone get any ideas for and Donna? <laughs> For how you might be able to use blank within those different subject areas. So just a quick one on the Word document. Laura sent round uh, an email just before the seminar started with the, the Word document attached again. But if you hadn't signed up or if you haven't got it yet, then just, as Laura says, if you just put your email in the chat, then we'll make sure we send it around to you. Yeah, and the Word document is just really a summary of those slides that I did around the four different levels around the winter scene, um, just to help you with the Gruffalo activity there as well. OK, so Victoria, you're saying you use them at the end of your learning link lessons, each lesson to see what the children have learned brilliant, and that can be used across all subject areas. Does anyone else use them? Yeah, differentiation in science. Yeah, I love the idea that your more able pupils are doing those level four questions. Yep. Guided reading is a brilliant one um, because you can have little questions in there for teaching staff to use, but even for parents and carers as well. Yeah, maths is a good one too. I find it blank, using blank in maths a little bit trickier, but I don't know if that's just me because I'm not a maths teacher. <laughs> Yeah, so Rebecca is saying you use them a lot with SEN children. Evaluations for design and tech, shared reading. Around getting understanding of vocabulary, some amazing ideas. Brilliant. Use them to type up comprehension questions around a book. And I think the really good thing with blank level questions, it's so versatile in that it's not just you that can do it, it helps you differentiate within the classroom and support those children to participate, but it's also getting those more able children, not, you know, not necessarily year one, but further up the school too, can start writing their own questions. Yeah. MPE, fantastic. Right. If if anyone doesn't have the chat function and wants to put their hand up, then we can bring you in if you want to say anything. Yeah. I'm going to disappear back to the screen again for a minute. Right. OK, so some of the ideas that I've come up with there again, you've guided reading. Um, I know a lot of schools I've worked with have had a set of blank level questions for books that they've written and then some of those questions can go home to parents and carers as well. Um, you've mentioned um, around science things, but having space on subject planning sheets as well for different level blank questions. So it becomes a part of your everyday planning. Um, you can then t um, target specific areas through activities as well. So if you've got a lot of children within the class who maybe are struggling at your level two and level three questions, you might have particular activities to support and boost those areas. It might be around sequencing or around identification of feelings, those sorting and categorizing activities which really help with vocabulary as well. And what we find is that when we've do, done whole class blanket screening, there's often some themes that come through, sequencing being one of them, identification of feelings another, but that's what you can be target as a whole class activity. Um, a number of other schools I work with have got um, lanyards with the four different blank levels on them and then some suggested questions that can be used um, particularly within the playground and behaviour incidents. So it's great for your TAs and or your lunchtime supervisors to have the training around blank level questions because that's often in that unstructured time when our more difficulties can occur and those problems happen where the children in that heightened sense of anxiety or that um, behaviour can't answer those higher level questions or aren't don't have the um, language skills to answer them at that point either. So the idea with the blank level questions is that you're once you've kind of worked out where the children are functioning, you pitch 70 percent of your questions at the level the child's working at and then 30 percent at the next level. So you're still challenging. Um, so obviously if you've got a child working at level four, it might be just the complexity of those level four questions. But for children at level two, you'd be using those questions 70 percent at level two and then trying to challenge them with some more challenging level three questions um, there. But it's great for the classroom in terms of differentiating so you get more participation. In terms of behaviour, um, so obviously, when a, as, as you're all aware, when a child's finding something difficult, language should be kept at a basic level in that first instance. So 
the picture I've got there is a child's bag on the floor. Rather than saying, why did you throw your bag on the floor? Leveling it down to where does your bag go? Put your bag away. So you can see a level two and a level three questions and takes that pressure off, but also supports those children who don't yet developmentally have that understanding of those higher level questions. So my question to you now really is one thing that you might try that you might go back to school and think, oh, I might do that. And again, I don't know whether you want to use the chat for this. I can see and your question around screening. Yes, I will get to that to my next slide. <laughs> Again, if anyone doesn't have the chat function, feel free to pop your hand up and then we can bring you in. So one thing, the thing I love about the blank level questioning is that it's something you can go away and use tomorrow. You don't need to have loads of resources. It's just you thinking about the types of questions that you ask um, and having those moments of like, oh, that's why maybe that child didn't answer that question because it's been pitched too high. Um, so William, you support, he's going to support making support staff aware of the different question levels. I think that's quite key. Good one as well. Lunchtime assistance. EAL children, but they struggle with the simple instructions. Yep. OK, it's just a reflective question really for you. And then to answer one of the questions in the chat there before, um, some useful resources. So ELKLAN, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, but it's um, for those of you who aren't, it's an accredited speech language communication course um, that you usually the speech language therapist is a tutor and guides you through that course. Um, blank is one of the sessions within the course and has obviously been a really popular one. But ELKLAN have got um, a screening tool called the Test of Language Comprehension or the TALC, which is a, takes about 15 minutes per child um, and goes through a number of pictures and questions with those pictures, but it will give you the levels that the child's um, performing at. And then obviously the Elk Clan Language Builders books, which you on their website you can buy, um, has again talks you through the different blank levels, but also has a lot of suggestions for activities around the different levels, particularly in the 5 to 11's book, the yellow book, it's around levels 3 and 4. Um, in the 3 to 5 sort of book, which is a green one, the under 5's book, that covers a bit more of level 2 activities. And then Twinkle is brilliant. Uh, loads of different activities at different blank levels. So I'm sure most of you use Twinkle and if you just put in the search box blank level three activities, loads of different things come up. There's some great PowerPoints which are great to do as whole class activities or group activities as well. But there are lots of different resources there that you can tap into. Right, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'll get people back. Right, so one of the questions, um, how does Talc Elkland differ from the Wellcom? The Wellcom is a screen that covers lots of different areas of communication. The Talc focuses in, I suppose, on the, the questioning, the different understandings of questions. Um, the two complement each other. So um, in Salford, obviously, we're, we're using the Wellcom a lot of in the, the nurseries, um, some of the reception classes as well. With the TALC, we haven't as a service screened the nursery children because we know they're probably performing at sort of level one and two, moving to level three, but we use it as a screen for reception up. Um, and it just adds another weight of evidence. It is a screening tool, so it's not a formal assessment, but it just gives you some ideas of where to, where the children are functioning and where to pitch questions, but also maybe some themes and observations of things that you can then work on as a group as well. That's all right. Hopefully that answered it, William. Fantastic. So we've got about 60 seconds left. So I'm minded that. Oh, there we go. We've got one more comment. Go on, Fiona. Do you, do you, want, do you want to say that one from Megan? The bloom taxonomy. Oh, you're going to do. You did. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's linked. Obviously, blank is based on research done in the States. Um, they are similar, looking at the different types of questions. So you can match the two with each other. Um, I'd have to go into a more academic explanation, I think, but hopefully that helps a little bit, um, Megan, around that. Was that was that the perfect question to end on with 30 seconds? Really? <laughs> <laughs> it feels like Thank there's a PhD you. in there. Um, it's, it's just hit quarter past, so I'm conscious that um, I don't want to take up any, any more people's time, given how busy everyone is. Um, and let, if you've got any more questions for Fiona, do chuck them in the chat and we'll send them to her. I'll make sure that we're kind of incorporating that into future sessions. Firstly, just a massive thank you to Fiona for that input. That was absolutely fascinating. I absolutely loved the trip down memory lane with the Gruffalo personally. Um, and I'm sure just from the basics of the, the engagement in the chat, it feels like it's been a really useful session for everyone. Laura's just put an evaluation link into the chat. We'd be really grateful if you could fill that out just to let us know what more kind of things you're interested in along these lines if there's anything else we could be doing better or anything we could be doing in the future it'd be great to hear from you um the next session is on friday where we'll be looking at understanding the different stages of listening and attention that's at half three see the event bright for more details thank you so much everyone for attending really appreciate you all being here today and fiona thanks again to you for your wonderful presentation thanks all